Thank you. My name is Lena Alexandra. I'm from Norway. And what I'm going to talk about is rebranding and how I went from being a blonde, unsecure bimbo to becoming a more confident woman, fitness coach, and owner and leader for my own company, LA Lifestyle. Have some of you ever had the feeling that you were not good enough? Yes. Four years old, I was sitting under my Donald lamp in my pink little room, watching magazines that I got from my grandma, who delivered them every week. And I was watching all the beautiful people at the red carpet in the nice dresses. And I was asking my mom, Mom, what are they working with? This sounds fun. And my mom said they were actors and artists. And at that moment, four years old, a dream was born. I really wanted to be an artist. And I was willing to do whatever it took me. But life doesn't always turn out exactly how we want, right? I'm from a small village called Trexta. And there is not a lot of things to do there. So we started to party early. 12 years old, I was at a party, and my life came to a turning point. I was group raped. I was in shock, and I had no idea how I should handle that. I was in a huge amount of pain, of course, and my, my life became suddenly very dark. I did not see the meaning. I didn't trust anyone, and especially not men. That little self-esteem... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good you're laughing. <laughs> okay. So, um, that small self-esteem that I had gained in the age of uh, 12 was taken away from me. And my grades went to good to bad, and uh, I uh, was diagnosed manic depression, anorexia, bulimia, and I was put on pills. And uh, yeah, I didn't look at my life as really positive right, th right then. So, what do you think I did to solve that problem? <laughs> yes, I needed some kind of power, superpower. And um, my way to get the power that time was to look for some role model who was strong, that I could look up to, and someone that I looked as... Uh, her, <laughs> Pamela Anderson. Have you heard about her? Yeah. Do you remember Baywatch? Like she was <laughs> running in slow motion. Uh, I just felt that she was so beautiful, famous, strong. And I thought, if I could just be like her, then everything would be perfect. Because I would rather have control over the guys than to let them control me because of what happened, right? And... There was just one little problem, because I couldn't be like her. She had something that I didn't have. Because my... Hello? Hello? It's working! Perfect! <laughs> yeah, the problem was, I was shaped like a pear. And she had a pear. So, I needed to do a change. Ta-da! So, and even if my self-esteem was low, I was still goal-oriented. So, if I really wanted something, I was willing to work hard to get it. 
And I worked 12 hours, night and day, Sundays, Fridays, I didn't care, because I wanted enough money to have the silicone boobs so I could be like Pamela Anderson and chase my dream to become Norway's uh, Pamela Anderson and then a pop artist. That was my dream. And that's what I did. And, uh, <coughs> sorry. Have some of you ever stepped over your own values? Yes. I was willing to do whatever it took me to reach my goals. And uh, I went to uh, Oslo after I had uh, got these silicone boobs because then I felt that I needed to go to the city, because I had big plans, you know? I wanted to be a pop star. And um, in 2008, I had reached my goals. I was living my pop star dream. I was touring in Norway and in other countries, uh, singing. And I even got placed 14th here in Denmark. <laughs> Thank you. The only thing was that when I was dreaming about being an artist, I forgot to dream about what kind of an artist I wanted to be. So I wasn't specific enough. And my chance that I got was to sing a song called My Boobs Are Okay. And at that moment, I had big silicone boobs and long blonde hair. And I thought that could be a little bit provoking. But I was willing to take the chance again. And I thought, well, oh, this is my only chance. I'm not good enough to be a real artist. So, but it became a success. And uh, I mean, I, could, I was living my pop star dream and I felt how it was, but I also realized after I had reached a lot of goals and uh, been living that pop star dream that there was something missing and I, it didn't feel um, like it was me. I mean, I was playing some kind of a character and I had been listening to managers who told me how I should be because I did everything to re reach my dream because it was so important to me and I really respected those people because I thought they were giving me good advices and they probably did, but it was not the right way to do it. And um, there was one time where the Norwegian, one of the Norwegian's biggest paper called me and asked if I could drive off the road and crash so they could have something to write about. Yes, I'm not kidding. That was my everyday life. And... Uh, I was still not that confident, but still, I felt that um, there was something wrong. I needed to do some kind of a change. And I was afraid because uh, at that moment, uh, I brought this too, <laughs> by the way. Uh, 1.2 kilo silicone boobs. I'm serious. That was the only value I felt that I had. And that was my job. That was my livelihood. And I, I wanted to do a change. And I had no idea where to go. Uh, I was afraid. I knew what I had, but I didn't know where to go because I couldn't do anything. I didn't have any talents. I wasn't smart. I was dumb. And uh, that was what I thought. <laughs> and the meanings of myself. Um, and... I remember I, I was talking to my mom and I asked her, maybe I should remove those and maybe get a new start. And she said, uh, if your managers are not, um, if they don't want you without them, <laughs> it's not worth it. And I really, I really thought the same. I, Deep inside, I thought that I had more <laughs> than just 1.2 kilos silicone boobs. 
uh, but still I was afraid. And then I was um, on my way back from Miami where I got a phone call and it was uh, TV2 and Dancing with the Stars who called me. And they asked me if I wanted to be in the show. And I answered, yeah, I'll think about it. But what I really meant to say was, yes, because that was an unique, unique opportunity for me to, to do a change. Uh, so everything felt so right. And um, I had been talking to, uh, to the doctor. And uh, there was, I th think it was meant to be, because there was this one date that I could do the operation to manage to be ready for the Dancing with the Stars uh, started. And uh, he could not do it because he was on a vacation. But still, he wanted to do it. And uh, he did. And because I didn't think that people would have seen me if I didn't change those and remove them. So I said yes to do the Dancing with the Stars. I removed the silicones. And... Uh, <laughs> focused on being good at dancing, of course. Uh, and I, I was so ready to, to do the change because it felt that the right moment, you know? And my international manager said, why change a winning team? <laughs> Some kind of team. And then my Norwegian manager said, it's like a football player who cut his bone off before the world championship. Great. <laughs> and uh, I got really pissed. <laughs> and when I get pissed, I get stronger. So I did everything I could to win that competition. I trained four to eight hours every day. I watched dancing videos, I visualized thinking I was winning when I was lying in bed dancing. And uh, hard work pays off. So I won. <laughs> <laughs> and you think that when you have won a competition like Dancing with the Stars on television, you're really proud, right? Yes. And I was, but still, there was a couple of steps that I was not 100% satisfied with, so I focused on that. But the reason was I was outburned, I was overtrained. So when the lights was locked, um, the darkness came. That's it, it has been really hectic, and I had said yes, yes, yes to everybody. And I was exhausted, and I had no idea who I was, because I had thrown away the 1.2 kilo of silicone boobs, and I had no idea where to go. So that's when the real change started, and I needed to look into myself and ask myself questions. Who was I? What was my uh, uh, values? Who did I want to be? So I had to uh, rebuild myself all the way from the bottom. And um, I was lying on the sofa at my mom's house for a year uh, with social anxiety. And uh, I was... De depressed, unsecure. And after I've been laying there for a while, I started to be restless. And I really wanted to do something. And it was my... That's when I needed to um, understand for myself that I needed to accept myself as good enough. I said to myself in the mirror, I am good enough. And in the beginning, it felt really weird. But after a while, it started to help. And I also needed to respect myself. I needed to tell myself that I was valuable. And, and also, what um, made me go up from the sofa was my passion. What is your passion? That is so important, like uh, Janet was talking about yesterday. 
you can't live without passion. Um, so my training was what got me up. Uh, I, I trained handball and football for 10 years. Some of you played it, yeah? I did that for 10 years, and training has always been a part of my life. That's what always have kept me strong and confident. Well, not always, but has made me uh, get through life. I mean, if you have a bad period or whatever, if you just train, it makes you feel so good. Life is so much better. I mean, you can't live a life without training. And uh, I started to work with that, and uh, it's a totally... Different, uh, big story that I can't do, tell you right now, but um, I found my passion <laughs> to help other people to become a stronger version of themselves, uh, both aesthetically and also um, personally and strength training. Uh, I think that we are the most happiest when we can be ourselves and live through our values. I mean, in Norge, as um, Andrea was talking about, we have this Janteloven. I really felt that a lot of times in my life. And now I want to just get it away. So can you help me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, that's my mission, and that's what I feel, why I feel I'm on this earth. Because I want to do everything that I can to get rid of this Janteloven so everybody can be themselves 100% because I believe that no matter who you are, I mean, if you have big boobs, fake boobs, silicone boobs or whatever, what uh, color or... I just think it's so good with freedom and being colorful and being exactly who you are because I think that's when you find your superpower. Life didn't come with instructions. There's not only one way to live your life. You are the one who can decide exactly how you want to live your life and who you want to be. Right? Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> so that's why I'm standing here today. I want all of you to go home and do exactly what you feel is right for you. Because you are the boss in your life. And when you are yourself, you are unique. And that's your superpower. Thank you.